Hello, my name is David Malin, and I'm the instructor for Computer Science E1, Understanding Computers and the Internet at Harvard University's Extension School. You're watching one of our videos of the week. For more such videos or information about this course, visit us on the web at computerscience1.org. Enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Dan Armendaris, a TF for Computer Science E1. In today's video, we're going to be talking about registering a domain name. Now, this may sound kind of cryptic, but really this makes a lot of sense. Let's say, for example, that I told you to go to a particular website, apple.com. Well, that's pretty easy. You can probably remember to do that because it's a word. But let's say instead that I made you go to 17.254.3.183. Well, go ahead and try that. Enter that into your browser and see what you get. That's one of Apple's servers. That'll lead you directly to apple.com. Okay, how about this one? 18.7.22.69. That's one of MIT's servers. So having a domain name masks the IP address, or that number that I was just telling you about. In this way, it might be easier for someone to remember your website. It also may give your website some character. So, for example, if you have a company, you can just have your company name as the domain name rather than actually having to enter in a series of numbers or the IP address. So this might give visitors a good idea of what to expect from your site. For example, when you go to apple.com, well, that, I guess that's a terrible example. I guess I would expect to see apples. But how about google.com? Okay, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense either. Um, maybe, maybe Microsoft. Well, hopefully you know what Microsoft is because now you know that it's a software company, you can go to their website and look up information on their products. So when you register a domain, sometimes registrars will also give you the option to host the website. There are two distinct steps required when getting yourself a website. First, you have to register a domain. This gives you basically a name on the internet so that someone can type in that address into their web browser and access your, your web page. The next one is actually finding a host. Now, a host will actually serve the web pages to you. Otherwise, when someone enters in that, uh, that domain name that I just mentioned, they'll get a blank screen. It'll give you an error of some kind. So right now, we're just talking about registering a domain name. You actually have several options. And sometimes, depending on who you, you register a domain with, you can actually find some hosting options to go with it. So that might, that might make it an easier path for you. So there are a couple of domain registrars that we can take a look at. Let's see, right here we have one. This is GoDaddy.com. They tend to have some specials, and you can just enter in a website, for example, yourname.com, and they'll tell you if it's available or if it's not available. And I believe they also have some hosting options. Here's another one here, NetworkSolutions.com. It's basically the same thing. A third one, Register.com. Now, you know what? I'm going to give you a little tip. You can also search for more if you go to the website 64.233.167.99. Go ahead and try it. I promise you won't, you won't mind that at all. So how do you register? Well, OK, let's go ahead and go through some of the steps. Let's pick a site that I want to go to. For example, Dan's video of the week is really fun to watch dot com. I know you will remember that because I certainly will. In this particular case, I'm just using register.com, but you can pick whatever domain registrar you want. So let's see. Right here, uh, it's giving me an option for uh, hosting as well, but I only want to register the, the domain for the purposes of this video. And it's also telling me, congratulations, my domain name is not registered. The domain name like that, I'm glad it isn't. So let's go ahead and select my domain name only because that's the only thing I want to order. So it wants me to sign up for a new account. Let's go ahead and enter my information in. Dan Armandaris, and my email address. Dan Armandaris, at gmail. Continue. Okay, now it's going to ask me several bits of information. 
whenever you register a domain, it has to have some contact information for you. So, okay, it has my email address. It needs my mailing address, so I'll go ahead and enter that in. Now, the city. Yeah, that's Cambridge. Oh, that's the state. Oh, okay. Let's say, uh, you know, I, I, I like to be, you know, I guess I'll be truthful. I'm from Massachusetts here. Uh, okay. I'm from the United States. Enter in my phone number. This will be actually a it, right in here, right now. It's asking me what kind of website it'll be. Uh, I guess it's just a personal site for now. Um, set up my username and password. Don't look. Not looking. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Now my top secret question. Now I'll go ahead and continue. So here we've made it to the next page, and you can see that we have a shopping cart with our domain name in it. Now some registrars will give you additional options that you can choose. This one, for example, recommends adding private registration. Now there is a central database called the Whois database that can be used to look up your information uh, for your particular domain. Using this uh, private protection, private registration protection, they'll mask that information so that your information will not be public like that. That's your personal choice. They also have a couple of options. Usually registrations last for one year. You can also choose to register them for additional years. If you only choose the one-year option, if you continue to use your website, you'll have to register it again at the end of the year. Uh, so I've gone ahead and selected the options that I want. I want to register my domain for 10 years, and I want to uh, not use the private protection. So I'll go ahead and proceed to checkout. Now this particular registrar is actually somewhat expensive. It's $150 for 10 years of registration. That works out to, well, $15 every year. You may be able to find some better deals from some of the other websites I mentioned there. GoDaddy, Network Solutions, even Yahoo uh, has some domain name registrations. So right now we're at the uh, checkout bin and uh, this is where I enter in my credit card information and the like and be able to register the domain name. After I do this, I will, they will send me an email, and after a couple of hours, my domain name will be registered, and I can pick a host for it. Hope you'll join us next time. Have a good night.